the lag has taken place. Our referee, Ben Taylor Fuente. Set the balls up and it's Mark Farnsworth to kick us off. Player sharing a joke. International Open Final, race to seven frames. First frame, Mark Farnsworth to break. Time running. Well, very well. Yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with that break. No My word. A couple of balls off the break. Reds or yellows, take your pick. He clears them both, Dan. He does. He clears them both. Time to talk about something else because you are <laughs> not. I don't care if he takes reds or yellows. He is getting both of these on the form that he's on. You could not have wished for a better start, could you? Look at the reds and look at the yellows. It's it's yellows for me. I think you take the plant first, and then they're they're absolute dolly. They're just there, they're sat. Extension call. Looks like he is taking yellows first because he's got the rest out. I think the only thing that could potentially go wrong. Uh, is when he comes down table, he probably needs to play on the yellow that's closest to the right corner pocket, bottom right corner pocket. Otherwise, he might be a bit of danger of the yellows covering each other. Play this fairly gently. It'll do nicely. A bit straight. You say that, yeah. Um, this is the first and last thing that can go wrong with this clearance. He needs to, if he comes short, he'll be able to play the yellow on the, the furthest right as we look at it. Yeah. If he gets down towards this left middle pocket, uh, to the point where he's actually yeah. taking it now. I understand that. I think that's a great shout. Yep. Oh, no. <clears throat> wow. I don't think that was his original plan. I don't think he originally planned to do that, but the angle that he'd left himself on that yellow that was over that top left corner pocket, I think he's felt the right thing to do was to, um, you know, take it out of the equation early doors. But I think it was. I think that's, honestly, by Mark Farnsworth's standards, that's a bit of a shocking miss. It's a straight pot. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, he was, he was like a lot of these top players do, he was playing a brave shot, you know, playing a, uh, the, not the obvious easy pot just to make the overall clearance easy for himself but I just wonder big moment in the match surely early doors as well there's got to be some fatigue hasn't there for Mark Farnsworth he looked a bit tired there when he sort of squinted his eyes a little bit and you know, you've got to remember Craig Marsh has had a good hour or so to relax probably go back up to his room you know grab a bit of food drink whatever whatever he felt like he needed uh, to get himself right for the final, but Mark has finished against Liam Dunster all of ten minutes ago, which was a very long match. Very long match, yeah. Like so, Mark has been in that zone. He's been constantly focused because he went straight into his semi-final as well. It's not like it he is. had a, a huge break between the quarter and the semi. Mm. So he's been playing pretty much solidly, I would imagine, now for at least six hours. Yeah, and we saw a, a mistake there from Craig because he left himself far too straight on that. Um, he wanted to land higher, uh, closer to the bulk line um, on that previous shot that he could, so he could simply stun up table and get himself close, if not below, the right middle pocket. But he's had to leave this at distance. This is now missable because of the uh, positional play. Played it well. It did wobble its way in slightly. It, it wasn't centre of the pocket, was it? It wasn't. It, it wiped its feet, as they say. And this is a bit of a tester, queuing what looks like right off this back cushion. Played Ooh. it well. Just, wow. just about off the far jaw. Again, just about, but... It drops in. That's all Craig Marsh will care about. He takes a one-frame lead. And it's uh, a bit of a surprise because Mark hit a brilliant break they were so nice they yep. came out so good and it was just that first plant that he played he didn't quite leave himself enough angle he was a bit straight um on his ball into the top left corner pocket which meant he then take took a different route um still missed the pot which for him is a 
you know, 95, 99 out of 100, if you like. Um, but, yeah, it needs to put that to the back of his mind. It happens. Even the very best make mistakes. It's how you deal with it. This weekend, Craig has hit the brake as hard as anybody I've ever seen. I don't know if I'm going to jinx it now, but... Just the, the, the noise it makes. I mean, he... Oh, is that regular drop? It's not. He's hit them really well, but he's, he's, he's been hitting them even better than that this weekend. He, he, I mean, maybe it was based on just what you said, but I didn't think he hit them as hard as... Not, not as good. It, it, it's more, I suppose, really the timing. Um, it just didn't seem to make that same sound as it's made before. He's been breaking very well this weekend. It's just the tonic for Mark Farnsworth after that miss in the first frame. He comes back to the table with an opportunity. Yeah, that's exactly what he needed as well. You make a mistake. I mean, obviously, you want first chance every frame, but after you've just made a mistake, the last thing you want is your, your opponent to break it clear. I feel like his problem here is the red in bulk. It doesn't go to the, the bottom right, so he can he can play the, the red onto the yellow or yellow onto the red or just take the red out first but that ball needs some development yeah, and you see he's played that pace there because he didn't want the yellow to stick to that top right hand corner pocket so he's played it at a bit of pace trusted a little bit more to luck but it was the right thing to do because now that pocket is open for that ball exactly that yep and he's got a small problem just below the right middle pocket and um, doesn't need another one kind of feel like if he got right behind that he could drop that in and it's natural for the black I mean it looks really tough but it, I mean it'll definitely go of course to be fair if you get right behind it the other way does it sneak past the yellow that's the question I don't think it does no there's not a double on and there's no real nice way to move it Mark going to solve that problem red. Is he looking to move it now? Yeah, we'll be stunning into it now. Oh, it's a good shot. It's a very good shot. Is he on the red? Oh, I think he's down towards the bottom left. It's very tight, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm not so sure he can. He, he can doesn't make look too it, annoyed. He, he doesn't know. Tells me that he can play this. From from a bit weird in the commentary box sometimes you think well, he, he definitely can't get through to that, but he obviously can. I was talking to um, Carrie Griffiths during the ladies' final earlier, and, and she kind of said something that actually makes sense with what you've just said about the, the commentary box. She said, sometimes if you walk around the table, you see different things. And you, you see do. Different, we are seeing everything from just One angle. essentially two camera angles. We've got a view of the overhead as well. Yeah, um, you, you do. But it, it makes it different when you're at the table. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. There's a uh, saying that Steve Davis... Um, says which is when you're in a bit of a pickle you can't see a safety shot and he basically said just keep looking at the table and eventually you'll see something yeah. and that's why we have a shot clock that's why we have a shot clock because that's exactly <laughs> what people do yeah. and uh, that doesn't make for great viewing no. sometimes but he's right like and he's right certainly more so than snooker to be fair yes yep. do agree so, one apiece. Yep, Mark Farnsworth returning. The favour? The favour, to an extent. I mean, Mark should be 2-0 up, really. But he's got the break again. If it, if he breaks again like he did in the first frame, he'll be very happy. Yeah, looks a little bit tired, Mark, but he's been in this situation many, many times before where he's played, you know, back-to-back -back matches all day kind of thing. And... Um, if anyone can deal with it, it'll be Mark. 
said, the last person to to win the Open and Professional in one weekend. Obviously, he's not going to do that this time because of Liam last night. But no. to, if he wins one of them and reaches the other final, that's still a, a very special achievement. It's already a special achievement, you know, to uh, have made two finals. And yet, not the first time it's happened this season. Half and dad. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, back in back in Coventry. That was the tour I missed, so I didn't see any of it. But yeah. big Ray coming up with a big break. Coming up with a very big break. Reds. Mm. Reds look good. Is the first red easy? Not I sure. It's that difficult. I mean, he could take the long one down the right hand rail, couldn't he? That's not too far away from the pocket. Uh, can he get through to it? He can't get through to that, can he? Cool. I think he <laughs> exactly oh, he what can. we were talking about. I think he can. He can just, yeah. Yeah, right, you are. Yeah, one of those. Nothing needs to be dislodged, but they need a bit of figuring out. It's a proper Mark Farnsworth frame, isn't it? It's just a pattern frame. Yep. Exactly that. If if if, if Mark Farnsworth plays this the way he wants to play it, he won't hit another... He won't move a yellow... He won't move the black. No, pinpoint accuracy with the cue ball. Work his way around the table. Yeah. I mean, he might it. end up stunning into one to hold it, but he wouldn't want to. No. And the first shot he's played there, um, harder than it looked. Yeah. That was quite an acute angle, and he had to play at enough pace to get the white back out from behind that yellow that he's just queuing next to now. Yeah, you hit that much harder than that, and it just ricochets off the far draw and comes back out. Yeah, the way the pockets are cut... Um, you know, if you hit it at pace, although it will drop in the pocket at a lesser pace, it actually kind of hits the jaw before it before the pocket takes it down, if you like. So Ten seconds. Stunning up table. Some people would have played that shot with rakes of right hand side and used the cushion. Mark prefers the Yeah, I think the natural was just with a, a, a touch more angle, wasn't it? If it was a touch more angle, he could have naturally just drifted it off the cushion, but yeah. he chose to stun. And it's perfect, to be fair. He's, he's absolutely spot on. Ten seconds. And that is perfection. <laughs> he, he, yep. knew he, he knew he could play the red into the left middle if he wanted, to, if he needed to next. But ideally, you want it to be dead straight on this because it's now stun, stun, easy black into the left middle po into the left corner pocket. Very nicely done. Typical Mark Farnsworth picks them off, doesn't dislodge or nudge or cannon a single ball because he didn't have to. Very well played. A cruel game sometimes because Mark Farnsworth is now 2 1 up, and uh, he's the only person in this match to make a mistake so far. It's cruel, <laughs> it's a horrible game, isn't it? Very cruel, but it's early days as well. Craig won't be worried, uh, he's, uh, he's been kept away from the table for the last couple of frames, but he knows that that momentum can easily shift in his favour. Yeah, you see Mark there, a picture of concentration, as he always is. Just widening his eyes there. You can see he, he looks tired, doesn't he? Yeah. You know, he looks like he's knackered. He looks absolutely shattered. Um, no offence, Mark. Uh, but anyone would be. I, I, I don't care if you're, if you're a marathon runner or, or an, a... a Olympic climber. Like, or or uh, less of an athlete. Uh, yeah, but my point is, I guarantee you, anyone would feel Thank tired you. because of the mental Thank exertion Thank that this game gives you. It is psychological torture at times, this yeah. game. It is, it, it is one of the hardest things, I think, is to keep focus at all times. You know, the amount of times I have told myself about keeping focus, doing the simple stuff well not taking an easy finish for granted. You've got, um, you know, just making sure that you take the extra two, three seconds. Something that I mentioned earlier on commentary that Mark Farnsworth does very well, Liam Dunstan the same, um, they, they seem to take the extra second or two or five seconds on that one crucial shot per frame. 
easy putt into the corner pocket, but you need to be pinpoint with a cue ball on your next shot to make the clearance simple the and easy. The sort that a lesser player will take for granted because it's so easy. Yeah, and they'll yeah. almost feel embarrassed because they've had to take time over such an easy shot into yeah. the corner pocket. But it's not about that. It's about the next shot. And there's there's often the one or two crucial shots or keys to the frame that you need to get that right. Um, and it's a skill in itself, teaching yourself and sort of managing yourself to play with a rhythm but to take that extra little bit of time when you need to to make sure that you get it right. And Mark Farnsworth is definitely an absolute god at doing that. Well, he's unlocked this frame already. He's got one more lock to pick, if you like, and it's going to be this next shot, I think. Reddy's closest to doesn't go to the left centre, so he's got to play the three-ball plant now. He's got to be careful where the first red he hits goes. Yeah, but he doesn't want it to get tied up with the yellow next to it. Exactly. Now you see him play it. Mm. It has gone wrong. You see, he's just staring at it. I know he's annoyed, but it will still go up to the top, and he's got a nice ball to land right behind it. He has. He's got, he he'd knew. have to play it with pace. but He knew before we knew, and he knew better than anyone, that... He had to keep that red away from that yellow. Yeah. So he'll be so annoyed with himself. He's for, going, for doing that. going back up table first. It's a oh hell of a show of confidence to, to, to play that the way he's played it. Now, he obviously can... He's on this. This is an un That was an unbelievably precise positional shot. Yeah. That is such a small window. He's got to get through that window between the the black and the yellow. And he's just potted a ball that's halfway along the table and screwed off the side rail. All it is is a massive statement. <coughs> oh, oh, he's played it off. Goodness. No, I think that's what he was playing. No, I don't think he did. But I it was a massive it statement. Did it? I think it did. Why would he go for that ball? I think he's just flicked off it. I think it, it, I think it did go. Maybe. But it's a massive statement of confidence to, that they, they even left it in that... Yeah. Well, wh whether it went or not... To play the red into the top right hand corner the way he did, with the nonchalance of just knocking in what to everyone else is a really difficult shot, just shows you how well he's queuing. Uh, yeah, I, I expect him to take the one that he's taking now, yeah. and then take that one I set up to the top right because I didn't think it went. But uh, sometimes in commentary, you know, you, you can't unless, see the you're, table. unless you're right behind it. I mean, you, 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 it sounds ridiculous to say because we've got. What have we got an overhead? We've got three or four different camera angles here in front of us. Um, but unless you're right behind the shot, you just don't see it like the players see it. Very nicely done. Yeah, very, very nicely. I mean, again, it, he's controlled it in such a way that he's not hampered queuing. It's no. it's as straight as he could get on it without being hampered queuing, really. Yeah, it looks um, like he doesn't quite have a full pocket because he's been down to check it two or three times now. Yeah, he's got plenty of pocket, has Mark Farnsworth, and he's got plenty of frames on the board. It's 3-1. Craig Marsh has been sat in his seat for the last three frames. Yeah, he's, uh, he only needs half a pocket, Farnsworth. Craig has been sat there for what feels like quite a while now. It has um, been, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> in the context of a Craig Marsh match as well. Yeah. But it's the... Uh, Trials and tribulations that you go through as a player when your opponent reels off three frames on the bounce. What he, he needs, there, he needs that. He needs that. The pool gods to flick that switch, doesn't he? It does. Yeah. On the brakes. Yeah. To be fair, he, he hasn't hit his brakes as well as we've been expecting him to necessarily. He's still hit two very good brakes and been unlucky to come up dry. Definitely. There's only so time, but but I think um, that's one of the skills of the break. Sometimes you can, this is might sound silly, but sometimes you can hit them too well. And he absolutely crunches the break most of the time, but especially this weekend he has. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And, and when I was playing this weekend, I felt like I was hitting the break really well and not putting a ball. Um, my last 32 match against Christy Caulfield, I didn't put off the first three breaks. I took a little bit off. Maybe try to make a um, an effort in my mind to hit them at ninety percent, 
um, to a firm punch, you know, a firm, you know, but but not not giving it everything, and I potted off the next three. And the amount of times I've done that in tournaments before and remind myself, it's about timing. Don't always necessarily try to hit them too hard. And easy to say now as if that's the key because it's, it's it's definitely not the key, but it's just one of the different angles you can you know attack the break from. Um, but sometimes uh, you look at Craig and you just think, how on earth are you not part of the ball off the break? You are hitting them that well. Yeah. I just don't get it. Um, and maybe that's it. Maybe maybe it's something to do. It's a million dollar question. You'd be a rich man if you knew. But maybe it's something to do with when you hit them, the harder you hit them, you know, they, they separate. If you were to sort of get it under a super slow-mo maybe they separate slightly differently the harder you hit them i don't know yeah i guess i mean uh, you know. mic <laughs> sort of microscopic level there must be some sort of compression and it's got to be there's got to be some some sort of key there tell you why because you watch the nine ball sometimes and they hit a soft break and if they hit it harder the second ball down doesn't squeeze out it will go above the middle pocket instead of into the middle pocket for example there's there's definitely something in it I just haven't bothered to take the time to look into it, which I suppose I really should, actually. Well, I so think... Try and win matches one of them. Mark Farnsworth would wish he'd been looking into it because he's come up dry this time and he's left Craig a finish on. A Craig's finish. done the hard work. He, he's got his bad ball out, but it hasn't come out as where, where he'd want it to. It's lodged on that right-hand row. As Mickey Flanning would say, it's out, but it's not out, out. Not just yet. Oh, Sorry, oh, Dan. Word. Sorry, Dan. We're trying to have a <laughs> trying to have a laugh for ten seconds of the final, shall we? But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, he's going about these well. I think he can top this through. Yeah, take that the yellow into the left middle. That yellow go to the left centre. Yeah, let's just now. Do you try and leave yourself dead straight on the yellow into the left middle, so you can top it through and take the white towards the left middle, or do you leave yourself a little bit low and guarantee leaving yourself a shot? on the yellow but from more distance yeah i mean it would be quite a lot more distance that's the thing isn't it if you're if you're going out around that other red yeah you're running quite a long way away and that's why craig marsh is a very fluent player has taken quite a long time over this taking his extension screwing back no. wiped its feet i'll tell you what he likes that pocket mark doesn't <laughs> that was the one that Mark missed in. He might be sat there thinking, how come you can pot in that pocket like that? And <laughs> Mark stayed mm -hmm. up. So he's not dead straight. So he's going to have to leave himself at a lot more distance. Down the red. Oh, he's taken, a, he's taken a risk there. This is a lovely shot. It is. He's taken a risk. Others would have just taken the Y in between the very centre of the table and the breaking spot. Um, Craig's decided to go all the way up the table. And try and get a little bit closer. Do you know what? It is a risk, but I think it's a calculated risk. Like, I mean, they all are, I suppose. But my point is, he'd have been really unlucky not to be on anything playing it like that. Yeah, and that's this is these are one of the finishes that Craig Marsh makes look quite easy. It's a great job. It, it, Very well played. It really is, and really well needed as well, because actually Mark looked like he was about to start running away with it, and Marsh has. Uh, Basically made the most of the one dry break that Mark's had so far. He has, and uh, Team Craig just putting a bit of time and effort into his tip there. Players often get funny about the small fibres that they can see if it overhangs the end of their tip when they're I think that's down about, on the shot. I was going to say, that's off. about when you're down on the shot, isn't it? If you yeah. see something on your tip or... Yeah, if you've got the smallest sort of almost hair... Yeah, you know, um, you'll know if you play uh, the game um, at the end of your tip, it gets in your eye line as you play the shot. So, a few different methods people use to get that. Well, you don't want to attack it with sandpaper. Sometimes you actually use like a five pound note, or I've seen people use a what's it called? What you put your drink on in a coaster? Coaster, um, just to take that fine edge off. The uh, minor things that go through pool players' heads. You wouldn't believe. Yeah, but you say Again, minor, but this is... Oh, my word. He's crunched them. He couldn't have hit them harder. It's not as nice a table for Mark, this. That's, that's the one good thing. Look at the way these explode from the pack. Yeah. You cannot hit them better. And this is what I was saying earlier. How 
is you know is the joke on Craig? Is he hitting them? Is Maybe he hitting well. them too well? Maybe. Answers on a postcard. Well, we've had four finishes from the break in a row. Um, if Mark can make this one, it would be the best of the lot. Kind of feel like he's forced into it. There's not. It's not the sort of frame where you're going to take control and play a safety, is it? There's. There's not really any options for that because both cover sets are so open. You're not wrong. And this is uh, not the easiest first shot he could have taken. He could have taken the pot into the top left corner pocket, but it's all about the long game. It's all about what's best for him winning the frame. And uh, that's come up a little bit short there because... It's those two on the side rail, isn't it? But No, it's that he's, he's, it's that is your primary problem. But the other one now is he's going to be taking the cue ball away uh, from this red that's in the bottom half of the table. Oh, where's the cue ball? Ooh, Mark Files oh, a few wow. lucky boy. Hand up of apology, and rightly so. I think that was very close. Yes, yeah, so he wanted to be able to play that red just straight into the corner pocket that he's played it in, but leave the white down this end of the table. But he just landed tight on that back cushion. That's caused him a problem. It has, but he's he sort of got away with that a bit because he's got an angle now um, where he can land on the next red in a way that he can break those two out. a bit he's straight for me. <laughs> yeah, he's. I, I think he's going to be tempted into playing the double now. It was risky, but I sort of thought he might try and drop the cue ball onto the yellow. I think he plays the double now. I think he does now, yeah. I don't think he's got much choice. Yeah, I don't know if that was his original plan, but... Yeah. Well, it it can't have been, can it? Because he's trusting to luck with being on his next ball from this. Exactly, because even if he makes the cannon... Oh, he's, he's decided to play safe. That's a good shot. It's a very, very good shot. Very good shot. And this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. There's the one or two points in the match, sometimes none, um, depending on how the ball was split, where he'll just play that clever shot that others won't see. They just won't see it. They especially won't see it when you've only got 30 seconds to play your shot. But uh, Craig's tried to play... Safety in return and leave Mark glued to the red. But he's overhit it. Now Mark's got a chance. Yeah, I mean, you're right. No, very few players in the world would have seen the shot that Mark Farnsworth just played because it wasn't. Now, it I was so it, it it was so clever because it wasn't like he could make it safe. It wasn't like he could leave Craig anywhere he couldn't pot. So right. he's just laid him right on top of a yellow. There's no no escape there for Craig really. And, Mark and then he's messed the it up red. by missing the. <laughs> he's missed the red. Look, he was a little bit worried if he hits it thinner. I think the natural angle is going towards this bottom left-hand corner pocket, and also he had to play it very slowly to stop that. So he probably is in his own mind trying to play it in off the far jaw. But um, still, nothing easier for Craig, you know. Can he play the plant? I kind of feel like it's worth a go, because if you get that pocket, you, you're still creating a big problem, Mark. If you can play that in such a way where you can still leave leave Mark with not very much to go at, he's not going to. He's going to try That's and move it. Pace. Oh, it's, it's getting harder. It's getting worse. Craig's digging a hole here. He is. He's not known for his building skills. <laughs> so you're sort of looking to see where's Craig's clever shot. Can he play the yellow at the very top of the table and leave Mark? I think that's the shot, Dan. Um, very top of the table. Yeah, yellow in the centre, just closest to the left-hand corner pocket. Weld him to the red and yellow. Weld him to the red and yellow. And you're then breaking out your bad ball as he's seen it. Maybe he's seen it. Maybe he just thought against it. I think he's. I think he's looking at attacking. I wonder if he's looking at because all the all the yellows actually do go. Um, I just wonder if he's looking at the yellow in the bottom right, off the red in the centre, as a potential out. I bet he's not wishing he play, now. I bet he's wishing he played the snooker now. I think that was the shot. Not the snooker, sorry, but just the the tuck. I think that was the shot. I think that's the shot Mark would have played. 
but then, you know, Craig Marsh plays the way that Craig Marsh plays, and that's what's won him a world title. So, but what does he do from here? I mean, he can, he can take this pot on, but even if he gets it, where's he going to go? Oh, what a piece of queuing that oh, is. Wow. It is. That's unbelievable. It's a great he, shot. He could, he's not come far enough, has he? If, he? if he came across the table and he was right behind that yellow onto red into the centre, he could actually top down the table now and it, it might not have been that bad. From here, he's got to do phenomenal things with the cue ball. He's looking at a double. He's looking at a double. He's got to get the cue ball out of the way. He has. Oh, what a shot this is. Oh, is he going to be on anything? He's got a plant. He's got a plant, I think, but... The, yeah, cue ball's running away from where he needs to be. Cue running away. I don't think he can get position. He cannot play. He cannot get position. He can play the plant. It's probably not even that difficult. Probably a 5 out of 10 for Craig, but I think he's got to even welded to the red. Breaking both out. Welded to the red. That's the shot. It is very much the shot. Very good, Craig Marsh. Oh, he's touching mm, ball. Touching ball, which is going to give Mark. Mark can just dolly off the cushion, can't he? Put him oh, beyond the red. Just, yeah, that's, he's played such a good oh, shot at touching Mark's, ball. Oh, Mark's going to be nasty here, I think. I think he's going to move the yellow onto the rail. And he's looking at how he can play the yellow and make it difficult. He's got options. He can also just come off this top cushion and leave the cue ball over on the right-hand side of the table. Does he have to leave Craig? Just putting the yellows together. That's... Hmm. Didn't hit oh. that hard enough, because now if he does get back to the table, then the black's not really True. in play. True. I mean, like I say, you've only got 30 seconds to make your mind up. He could have just come off the top cushion and played over to the right-hand side of the table, which would have given Craig uh, yeah, this a is different type of problem. This could be a hell of a shot. What's this is cushion at? first, and then yellow off the red in the centre. Great shot, oh, great oh, shot, Craig he's Marsh. He's potted it clean. That's oh, phenomenal from Craig Marsh. My God. I think the red made it a big pocket, but... He didn't need it. He didn't need it. Look at that. Man, look where the cue balls landed. Oh, he's, he, he, Just phenomenal. You kind of think he's definitely potted this now, but he hasn't. It's there, though. It's there, and he's got... A, he, he's, he's close to his work, but... It, it, it oh. goes to the bottom right, so I think I think he gets this 99 out of 100. Oh, oh no, Craig, what have you done? He's thrown his arm oh, at that. How can you play those two shots? Look, it wasn't an easy black, was it? But you just kind of thought he'd already potted it after those the, the, the two previous. Did you see his gesture there? Arms outstretched, like, I've yeah. missed it by this. Wide, yeah, yeah. cricket, yeah. Um, Oh, that's going to be so tough. To eat. He's going to think about that for years to come. Yeah, yeah, he is. Because what a finish it would have been. What? I mean, two shot. Even the the second, even the last yellow was tough. Yeah, you're three really, two really down tough. in a major final. That's a tough shot. You know, he's he's absolutely nailed that. And then um. And then it felt like it. I don't know. Did he did he rush it? Did he take it for granted because the two previous were. So much more difficult, but oh. the long and short of it is... These are questions that he'll be answering in his own head, as you said, for certainly the foreseeable future. Yeah, and you fear the worst for Craig. Unless he wins. If he comes back and wins, he'll, he'll forget about that. Well, he'll, he'll have a good laugh about it if he comes back and wins. That's yeah. what he'll do. <laughs> Remember that black I missed? <laughs> yeah, ha-ha. Oh, Oh, we can have another look at the yellow down the rail, though. This is... I mean, this was tough enough. So that, tough. That's a great shot in its own right, but the shot before that... The cue ball's just come half an inch out too far there, hasn't it? If Craig's right behind that... Yep. It, because the, yeah, the cue true. ball and the object ball are so close together, actually, it's one of those where the... It's sort of a blind pocket. You're not looking at the pocket at the same time as the shot because the cue ball's so far away and the, the black's so far away from the pocket. Yeah. You, you you actually can't... They're more difficult to visualise when they're that close together on a long shot. You are bang on as normal, as usual. Down far. <laughs> turning point, though. Massive turning point. Yeah, it could be. Mark could be. Mark was in first, made his mistake. Well... Played a good safety. 
Um, Craig had his chance to make it three all. Did all the hard work. Looked like he had nothing on. And this is the black. Oh, this is dry. But this, this Craig, is dry. Exactly what the doctor ordered. Exactly what he needed. A dry break from Mark Franzo, so he can back to the table. Get that, get that black out of your head immediately. Yeah. Clear up. Yeah, start to make amends. Just the one problem. The red and the yellow, whichever way you go. I kind of think you've got to go for the red. Yeah, I think red's the colour. Now, that, now that's nice, because he's left himself an angle on the red over the, the top left. To either nudge the... You could nudge the yellow out of the way, you could nudge into the red, and you're probably going to be on one of the two to the left centre. There's yeah. lots of options here. you just got to pick one and stick to it. Sort yeah, of I think you, you, you don't want to... Uh, look at it playing there. Mm, Went to the left middle. I kind of feel like I want to break it out first. I yeah, think just you don't want to hit the yellow because you might stick to the yellow. Oh, or you might go through the gap. That's unbelievable. You definitely want to hit something, though. He's on nothing. And what's he got? I He's mean, on I absolutely nothing here. Nothing. I can't see a thing. I, I, do you know what? I don't even think there's a double. Ten there's seconds. not a double. There's not a cocked hat. There's not a safety. He had a swerve. He had a swerve. And actually, that's come out about as well as he could have done. He's at least given Mark a problem in this bottom left-hand corner of the table because everything else goes. Has he, though? Is that really a problem? Because that's cushion first and off the red. It's not even difficult. It's his only problem. Yeah. The, what about the yellow neck? Well, I suppose it's the ne yellow next to the black flies in either centre, actually, doesn't it, if you get behind it? I think it definitely goes into the right centre. If he's so. going to take this on... If he's going to play this off the yellow, he needs to play it off with, play it with pace so that the yellow comes out nice. Yeah. If you play this soft and you just push the yellow onto the side rail, you create another problem for yourself. Yeah. You either play ultra soft so it barely moves, or you play it a bit of pace and probably try and push it towards that top right corner pocket. Pace it is. Yeah, and he's tried to get on his problem yellow in the same shot. It's he's a very a smart move. He's a little bit close to his work there. Yeah, but he hasn't quite... I think he was playing on it into the uh, bottom right corner pocket, but he hasn't quite made it. So... Uh, he thinks this goes. Very does it well does. played. Very, very well played. That is very well played. From where that was, and from how close the cube was, the judgement on that, to come off the cushion and flick the red... That thin. Some people hate playing those shots to the point where they wouldn't have played it because he was too close. Scared of double hitting the white. Yeah. He's played that really well. I think you've got to be confident with your cue up in the air. I think that's kind of something that people perhaps don't practice as much as they should. You know, oh, raising yeah. the butt and... Yeah, there's no way you'll see people doing a practice routine for that. No. You know, playing 20, 30, 40... Shots in a row where you hamper queuing, for example. That's but another one. Yeah, hamper um, queuing. Definitely. I've never done a drill for it. I've sat there and practiced my break before. I've, I, I, I kind of pretty self-taught myself and um, probably try and I always used to think practice the difficult things. So I, I would practice knocking balls up and down a cushion because I think if I get comfortable doing that, um, you know how easy the easier pot's going to feel. Yeah. The break, obviously crucial shot so yeah I've practiced that before but yeah, I don't think I've ever practiced uh, awkward queuing or bridging or I don't think I've ever practiced the break <laughs> there's only one reason for that and that is uh, my hometown where I play every single table is pounding the table <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. you're not going to practice the break if you have to pay a pound to do it every no, time no 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 <laughs> not unless the landlord's not there and you're putting Putting beer cloths down the uh, pockets. Yeah, you know. every now and then. Every now and then you get a, a free pool night or something. But um. So this frame's not done yet. Um, 
Always so easy to control these. Done it pretty well. He's just a bit thin, isn't he? Got a little bit. Um, does he? Can he get into it enough to screw to the left of the black, or does he play it with a bit of top and left and go through the gap? Two inches further down up? the table, his mind's made up. Yeah, it's frame over. Yeah, I think he's playing through the gap. Doesn't want to hit the. Doesn't want to be hampered queuing. No, he's perfect. He's perfect. Played it really well. An excellent right. counter clearance from Mark Farnsworth. Sees him move just two frames away from another, yet another IPA crown. Um, it's, you almost can't overstate how fantastic Mark Farnsworth has been over the last 12 months. It's, well, well not even 12, like what, five months? It's crazy. It really is something very special. Yeah, it's just uh, ultra consistent. I mean, to play to the level he plays at again and again, round after round, tournament after tournament, it's, um, it's hard to put into words just how impressive it is. There always seems to be someone sort of like this knocking on the door, though, be it, be it Dunster, be it Farnsworth. Um, Mark Boyle a couple of years ago had a, had a really good run. Clint Ianson's had a couple of really good runs where he's won two or three in a row. Mm. No one's ever really dominated this sport. I think the the way that the sport is, with the luck involved, um, the variables, where fairly regularly you can make one mistake, your opponent makes two, and you lose the match because of getting first opportunity, because of how important the break is, makes it much more... Ooh. Oh, she's Difficult just avoided it. the uh, cube will being kicked straight in off, and actually, he's made a ball on this break. Yeah, he's, he's okay, but yeah, long and short of it, difficult sport to dominate because of all the variables that you don't. I just feel, I yeah, I know, but I kind of feel like Farnsworth and Dunster have got that Federer Djokovic vibe, or Federer Nadal, or you know. I'd say more Nadal. Mm. Djokovic mm. you know because they're not the graceful one are they for, for Farnsworth or Dunster are the are the absolute mental rocks you have to scrape them off the table kind of thing whereas oh, uh, oh Craig's losing it a little bit yeah <laughs> someone like Craig in full flow or a Ben Davis you know in full flow they're a Federer yeah so graceful so attacking flair players you know and um Craig wearing his heart on his sleeve, not for the first time. Not a happy bunny. Extension cool. Mark's called his extension almost immediately. Just wants to figure out how he's going to go about this clearance. What order he's going to take them in. I think the yellow that looks like it's tied up at the. Um, top of the table. Oh, that black's just come far enough as well. That goes. Yeah, it's a good shot. I think you know, top of the table. I think does go into the right middle. Does it? It's a, it's a Mark Farnsworth frame. It's a pattern frame. Yeah, it's uh, less of a problem than what it might look. Might, the table might look a little bit messier than it is. Ten seconds. I see him play this with a bit of top and just go into that red. Exactly like that, just to clear the path. You have to feel for Craig a little bit here because he's again one of those frames where he he's come to the table, he's actually got the first opportunity for once, and they're not really there. And his first shot, if he makes it, it works. If he doesn't make it, he leaves the finish for Mark. It just seems a little bit typical of what's happening to Craig at the moment. Does he? Look how just getting his hand there on the table. Yeah, just wants to get off that top cushion. Doesn't want to be. I mean, like if the if the cue ball is anywhere near that bulk line, it's frame over, and we're talking about Bake Off again. But <laughs> he, uh, he, this is going to take a little bit of cue, and he's going to go into the red afterwards. So he needs to just make sure the white gets away from the red. Um, he's used his extension. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. The player shot. 
can't wait for Tuesday for Bake Off. Oh, I'll be watching something else. Not for me. I'll tell you what I have missed thanks to this tour, and mm. I will have to catch up on Taskmaster. I don't even know what that is. I promise you, I'm not saying it to fill airtime because Mark's got the easiest clearance. <laughs> You've Left, never I watched Taskmaster? No, I don't know what it is. What is it? It's so it's Greg Davis. Uh, the guy out of In Between Us? Yes. Yeah, the it, teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's the Taskmaster. So he sets celebrities' tasks. There's five celebrities per series. Yeah. Or comedians, really, rather than celebrities. I hope it's on the BBC. We love the BBC. We do love the BBC. Yeah. It isn't. All right, okay. Um, I think partially funded by them. Yeah, cool. I think. Carry on, then. Um, yeah. I hope. Um, and yeah, it's it, it, he sets them these ridiculous tasks, and then the comedians have to take them on, and he judges them. But it's it's amazing. What sort of task? Oh, oh, uh, there's nothing I couldn't say before the watershed, is there? No, I don't think so. Um, one of them was like paint a horse while you're riding a horse. Yeah, I sort of want to watch it now. <laughs> yeah, okay. I've kind of sold you on it. Yeah, that sounds all right. Yeah, sounds you, different. You absolutely need to. Oh, there was just yeah. there was just one. It was I'll the very very first episode, I think, where um, it was eat as much watermelon as you can. They just had a watermelon, nothing to break it open with or anything, and they had a minute. Brilliant. Well, I might give it a go, Dan. You need to watch honestly. it. You do, honestly. Go back to the pool. And back uh, to Mark Farnsworth's potting masterclass. Absolute masterclass. Um, Made the clearance very easy for himself with the first couple of shots that he played uh, in typical Mark Farnsworth style. And uh, it's looking a little bit like writing on the wall for Craig Marsh, isn't it? Six two down, he's not been at his best, to say the least. Mark has been at his usual nine out of ten as a performance, you know, just absolutely rock solid. Um, I think nine's a bit harsh. He's, he has missed one ball. No, he's, 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 he, 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 missed I think he ball. made a mistake early doors, but it was. Um, aside from that, I mean, you know, like we say, we'd, <laughs> we 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 judge it by Mark Farnsworth standards, and uh, there's been many, many a match that we've commentated on the stream where he's not made a single mistake. Yeah, he's made one, I think, in this match. Um, by my notes, it's, yeah, pretty much, pretty I mean, much just one proper mistake. One miss in the first frame. Yeah. It all looked so rosy for Craig after that first frame. I know, and, and Mark just a bit. We talk. We were talking about how Mark looked a bit tired and a bit yep. on edge, and then all of a sudden, out he comes. But what great players do, you know, he just finds a way, finds a way to win. And Craig Marsh, there, you, you, you see, all he had. It's just typical of when you're six two down in the match. Yeah. Mark comes up dry. Right. Let's get back into this. Let's clear these. Then I can break. I can break and clear six four bit of a momentum change yeah. um, comes to the table and he's got nothing but a full length of the table plant yeah. difficult shot um, and had no he's missed it by on. very little as by well. a fraction yeah uh, but now look what he's left for Mark yeah nice easy reds bit of a problem with the black he's going to have to develop that I'd imagine he'll probably find a way I mean he's got many options to you know I think he may well clear the two down the um, top right corner of the table now unless he if the if the yeah, but he's got I, I think oh. he's got so many options. Does the red in the middle of the table pass the bottom left? Because if it does, he could probably leave a nice angle on that to yeah, um, does go, he go into the yellow. Yeah, if it does, he can play it off that. If not, he could have potentially played it off the one next to it. If not, he's got the plant over the corner pocket where he can go into them, and he's highly likely to be on another ball. For me. Um, I think Craig Marsh has played his last shot in this match. It's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Mark can sneak that in. He can move the yellow out of the way now if he wants to. I think he's got an awful lot of choice. Clip this in thin. Just doesn't want to... If he, if he plays the plant now... Ten um and goes into the cushion and back into the yellow, bumps yeah. it from behind. See how important it is? He's just taking his extension on this. Doesn't want to tie the yellow up with the black. No, I think he could probably just play that at a bit of pace. The the red's not going anywhere because of how thin he'll be hitting it. So he knows yeah. he's got a shot next up. 
Should yeah, and he doesn't want to take the one closest to the pocket first because then afterwards when he takes the red, um, the white's probably going to be stuck in that corner, which is no good to him. He is doing that. He is doing it. Okay. Now, if he can get through to this, which I'm sure he can, he can play um, to, I think, screw off of the yellow and bring the white out to the left of where it is now. Potentially play the yellow into the, the the red into the left middle pocket. You know a little bit better because he's right behind it, or he can just go up table now, which it looks like he's doing. Leave the red over the right corner pocket as his last ball. What we're going to see him do if this comes out good, although he well, he's got the best angle there, but if he can he'll play the red into the bottom right corner pocket last, stun into the yellow, and play the black into the left middle. So what he's essentially got to be careful of here is not leaving himself either too close to the left side cushion or hampered on that yellow because he needs yeah. to be able to get to the bottom of the cue ball. Or, or topping through because he's topping through into the yellow and the yellow going into the cushion and snooking himself behind it. It's fine. He's, he's played it. So he could obviously see right behind it. So that was a lot easier than it probably looked. He doesn't look overly happy with it. But I really don't know why. <laughs> should be all right. As long as he can get through to the point angle, it should be okay. Can. Um, I think I think if anything he's got a bit too much angle, so he's maybe worried about the cue ball sliding off the yellow and coming back out too far. Yeah. Ten seconds. Just wants to kill this cue ball stone dead off the yellow. Oh, Mark. Oh, it's no good. It's no good. Is it? Oh, look at it. that! Is, that is a proper slam of the cue. I felt that in here. He's angry. He is angry. Do you know what the way Craig's the way Craig's gone? Game has gone, I reckon Mark flukes this. <laughs> Very harsh, Dan. <laughs> just, I'm not... It's I'm just saying the, days, the way that Craig Craig's game... I'm not just saying Craig's been bad. It just, you know, just the way it's going for him. He's pa no. <gasps> oh, oh, my word. That was a brilliant effort. It's a great effort from Mark Farnsworth. A great effort, but... What a way to win a title that would have been. <sighs> yeah. You look at their faces. You'd think Craig was 6-2 up. I mean, he looks happy. Mark's fuming. Uh, Craig's just happy to be back at the table. He's livid with himself in the inside. He's absolutely stewing. He is. He knows how quick these matches can turn. You know, if Craig does manage to clear these... It's unlucky. It's a bit unlucky, but... He's at that point in the match now where I think he'll probably just casually knock this in because he's almost under less pressure at 6-2 down than he would be if it was, say, 6-all, for example. Yeah, true, actually. Um, I think they call it the loser's strike, don't they? Well, so. this is... Uh, well, you think... No, you feel like you're beat, so you just loosen up. Kind of, pra yeah, practice mode, if you like. Yeah. Um, I see Craig quicken up a little bit here because this is a tough finish. I don't think now. Uh, he screwed it in, have he? No, he's OK, just... Now, does he really want to be... Again, it's one of those, unless you're on the table. The yellow into the right middle pocket. Cross, you have to cross really double. be right behind it. Cross double. It. This, is, this is the shot. It's a great shot. It's a great shot. It's come out well. Well executed. Can he spin the cue ball around past the yellow here? Is he just a little bit worried about flicking off it? I think so. Ooh, that was close. Nicely done. Is this the start of the comeback? It's a great little, great little cameo clearance from Craig Marsh, that isn't it? But yes, he's made he's made a very tough finish look easy, and it is that kind of thing, you know. He's he's almost felt like he was beat, you know, two minutes ago. If these come out nice, I think you'll see him really loosen up and take them out probably fairly quickly. Feels like he's almost got a free hit now. He looks like the guy that was, he looks like the guy that's six three up, doesn't he? He does. Mark looks like the guy that's six three yes. down. Look at him. So never been to, have you ever seen someone six three down so happy? I kinda of wanna call him Jolly. Jolly Marshy? Har yeah. Marshy the Jolly Man. Yeah. Fair enough. Just he's just got such a happy demeanour, hasn't he? You know, like we we said it earlier, he 
Funny he'll sit guy. there and stew for a while, but actually, oh, yeah. as soon as he's over it, it, it's like ping. He's back in the room. Well, at the end of the day, I mean, God, how many times have these top players played matches where stuff's gone against them? Yep. It happens. It's, it's happened before. It's going to happen again. You know. So, anyway. Absolutely. Oh, Marsh has found his break. Marsh has found oh. his break. Oh, look at them. Beware, Mark Farnsworth. This is not over yet. No, he's not going to hand it to you. You really can't hit a break sweeter than that. You can't hit it better than that. It's actually not really that nice a table at all. No, it's not. The, the red next to the black is a big problem. Yeah. Um, I think the other yellow. I think the yellow over to the... Oh, Craig, what have you done? He's given it away is what he's done. Yeah. One three shots. One visit. Running. Trying to do too much in one shot there. I think maybe getting to the two reds that are on the right hand side cushion. Not so jolly anymore. No. Jolly Marsh is That's a. more of a wry smile now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not the sort of smile he wanted to be given out. Ten seconds. It's just got to hope that Mark finds a way to mess these up, which yeah. I think Craig's on the plane. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if he... Is he snoring? <laughs> no, he's awake. He's awake. He looks dumbfounded. He almost can't believe it, I don't think. Yeah, he's just... He, I know he's 6-3 down, but that was a chance there to go 6-4. Not yeah, an well, easy one, but it was a chance. Yeah. You know, and he feels like he's just... Especially after what Mark just did in the last frame, you know. Yeah, you that, really that was the opportunity to really pile the pressure on Farnsworth, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, you really want to make him work for it, you know, and um, I'd be really disappointed there. We say that, I don't know, I don't know if Mark's played a great shot there. I'm not entirely convinced about that shot, no. Look, look reds, are, reds are fine, absolutely fine, but where's his first red coming from? He's got a player, he's got a slightly longer red into the bottom left corner pocket, queuing off the cushion to win a major title. Does he go yellows? I don't think you can see a yellow, can he? That red down to the bottom right, that's not a full pocket either. Oh, he's all right, I think, there. He's cut it in the middle. Ooh, that was close. Surely, surely Mark Farnsworth is going to get over the line this time. I think it will be one of those finishes that's described as falling over the line after his last... <laughs> yeah, you know... Top players are their own worst critics. Oh, where he's got the cue ball now. He'd love to be back there again, wouldn't he? Yeah, that's at least where he needs to be. He can come a bit further down the table. After he plays the red into the bottom right corner pocket, doesn't want to be running into the yellow next to it. Or ideally, he'd like to be quite straight to the point where, because he's perfect on it now, and this was definitely not his original plan, perfect on it now, he's... That's not good. He's taken it. Um, he wanted to have an angle there. He wanted the white to be probably between where the white is now and where the black is. And then he could have played this at a bit of pace. Brought the white at the table. Not fairly easy. Not the Another first right time. To a win. Not the first time he's changed his route and it's gone a bit wrong for him. He's got to dig down at this now as well. This is not. This yeah. is no formality. This is really tough. Ooh. Now, does he just knock this in and leave himself a long black? Does he jack up the queue a little bit, try and play it at a bit of pace and bring the white out towards the centre of the table? I kind of feel like it's the, it's actually not the worst angle where he could just top this through with a little bit of check side off the top okay, cushion and come back. Oh, he's jacking he's up a little jacking bit. Up. Oh, oh. So he just got there. He really is falling over the line. He really is. There's a, a real look of grit on... On uh, Mark Farnsworth's face there, he really mm. gritted his teeth when that one went in. He's feeling this a little bit. Mm. He's just making sure, is is there a gap for the cue ball to... Because the natural angle will take it 
towards the right middle pocket, I suppose. Yeah, is there a gap for that? By which does he then have to play this with the tracer side? He's played it at pace. Played it very well. And well he's played. played. Mark Farnsworth is the IPA International Open champion. Well deserved over Craig Marsh in the end, who never really quite got going in the match. But what a final. What a weekend it's been, Dan. Yeah, brilliant weekend. Great weekend of Paul. Um, special effort from four players in particular. Farnsworth, <laughs> Marsh, Dunster and... Uh, yeah. Um, John McAllister, um, you know, we've had our uh, amateur winner. Yeah, Michael Tomlinson. Michael Tomlinson and, and the Deb ladies, Birchall Deb Birchall. Birchall. The lady. Yeah, former double world champion, Deb Birchall. Nice to see her back to form. Yeah, it is indeed, and a great weekend's worth of pull. So we're going to hand you over to Kev Barton, who's going to go through the uh, trophy ceremony and grab a couple of words with our players. And welcome down to the arena for the final presentation of a superb weekend of pool action. First of all, can I introduce our runner-up, Craig Marsh. <laughs> Craig, just didn't quite happen for you in the final. No, I was really flat, the focus was dreadful. I don't know what happened, just didn't, uh, just didn't turn up tonight at all. And uh, Mark was clinical in the end. Uh. Yeah, he's not the person that you want to be uh, giving chances to, because he's, he's playing pretty well at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I get frapped for him tonight, to be honest, but... Uh, yeah, that's the thing I'm more disappointed in. Not so much losing. I mean, losing obviously hurts, but I mean, not not really turning up and giving him a game like is, is the hardest part, you know. But uh, you know, I'll take a positive from from the week. I've had a good weekend, so uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next tournament. Now, to be honest. Yeah, and that's that's the thing that you're obviously going to take. Your your form has been superb. You know, Craig Marsh is back. Yeah, he is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, hopefully I'll have a few more games in now in the next couple of couple of tournaments. So uh, yeah, that's that's about it really. I'm, uh, I'm not. I'm not too. I'm disappointed, but I'm not too disappointed, you know. So, I'll take it really. Okay. Well, overall, Craig, well played. Great weekend. Well played, Greg. Ma Greg Marsh, our runner-up, but our winner yet again this season. It's um, it's becoming a bit of a habit. Our winner, Mark Farnsworth. Mark, we saw the look on your face when you pointed that last red uh, just before you pointed the black. Tell us what this title means to you. Yeah, it's like um, a great season. I think I'll throw out the four of the Opens now, but um, especially after last night, obviously, they got uh, doing well to get through the final and getting getting smashed around the table, really. You know, and obviously, like, Liam was absolutely brilliant, but it still hurt, you know, so uh, didn't sleep very well and all the rest of it. You know, I, I just wanted to try and get stuck in a day and put out my mind a little bit. And to be fair, I played pretty well all day, you know, I played a lot better today than I did yesterday, so. I'm um, just absolutely, the game against Liam in the semis, I was just absolutely all over the place. I went, I think it was 3-1 up, Mr. Ball, for 4-1. And then I went 4-3 down. I played really well after that, and then I couldn't get over the line. Probably a bit of last night in my mind, which it's the worst thing you can do, you know. But just to get through, and then like Craig says, he was a bit unlucky with his breaks down the final. And I think I got a couple of good chances to build a lead early on. So just absolutely delighted to, to win. Uh, yeah, obviously, uh, beating Liam, you know, your great rival in that semi-final must have given you an absolute real confidence but was coming into the final against Craig. Yeah, it was it was a it was a pretty good match early doors and I think we both missed like I think Lee went in off the break twice in a row, I think it was to let me back in the match sort of thing, you know, and then I I got six three, I think it was or six four and I couldn't get over the line and then just came straight on in at the final. I know Craig's been playing really well so I needed five, ten minutes to try and get a bit of a breather because I knew well, I expected Craig to come with like, both barrels, you know, and it just he was a bit unfortunate off the break so he couldn't really get in the match which Fortunate for me and mostly unfortunate for Craig. So a, a runners up and, and a victory. Not a bad uh, weekend's work here at the Alley Man. A great weekend. Yeah, um, like I said, it's um, brilliant to win a tournament, you know, because it went a couple of years without doing anything, you know. So this year got a bit hunger back, and it shows that I haven't been putting loads of practice in, but just in the matches, I've just been trying to dig in as much as possible. Um, so really pleased. Well. For the, not the umpteenth time this season, Mark, I'm going to present you with a trophy and announce you as the International Open Champion. Congratulations. Well done.